Hello, and welcome to Rick's Kids. Um, I'm going to make this my next build before I get uh, into the group build, the um, small scale group build, which is hosted by Sean and Brian. Um, so I'm going to crack on with the Phantom of the Opera for now. Uh, this kit is an Atlantis kit. I believe it was either Poland Lights or Mobius before that. But the original kit um, is Aurora. Uh, nothing, I don't think anything has changed in this kit since its beginning. It does have the glow in the dark um, uh, option in there, but I don't do the glow in the dark stuff. It doesn't appeal to me. Um, it's in association with uh, Cheney Entertainment. As, as we know that uh, Long Cheney was the Phantom in the original film in 1925, I think it was 25. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be uh, cracking on with this one. Uh, I have been in it, I have had a look in it. Um, so it's about 10 inches tall. Uh, just a quick pop in there. Um, most of it's still sealed in the bag. I have had the bags open, still sealed up. Um, just making sure that all the parts in there, there's all the glow in the dark stuff um, that I'm not going to be using. I might use those as test beds for, the, for some painting. Um, but apart from that, the whole kit is, is basically all in this bag. Um, now, I know we've got, uh, you know, this character in the back, but as far as I'm aware in the original film, I don't recall seeing a, um, a prisoner, so whether he gets added to it, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I just had to run and open the door. I heard a parcel come through the door. Um, quick look, it's uh, another thicker kit. We'll take a look at that at some other point, but I plan to uh, plan to build this uh, private of the centre company of the Coldstream Guards Waterloo 1815 at some point. Anyway, going back to um, going back to this kit. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure whether I'm going to do. The whether the prisoner will be in it or not, I'll have to look at another another look at the film. But uh, I don't think that uh, is in there. It looks a fairly straightforward looking kit. Um, not much to actually do. Uh, it looks like these are definitely uh, instructions from the original Aurora type. It when it came out, um, yeah, so it's a 1 8 scale, it's about 10 inches tall. Uh, I'm sure there's some filling and stuff. Um, Blackbeard, a Godzilla, and a Forgotten Prisoner of Castle de Mare at the bottom there. Um, so, yeah, this is what I'm going to be cracking on with. Um, I'll see you in a bit when I've got a little bit done. Okay, so I have got the head together so far. I've done all these theme lines around, apart from a few that need to be dealt with. Um, not sure if you can see it very well or not, but I have filled his eyes. I don't like that's why they look a bit white I don't like the way the eyes are done where you've got that uh, like trench around the pupil um, so what I've done is I've filled the eyes in uh, I'll be doing the eyes of my on my own accord so um, yeah they will, they will get until they're flat out um, but they would get filled in, so makes it easier to paint and trying to paint something 
that's got a trench in it. Uh, it, it wouldn't look normal, so uh, that's how I've got that one. So uh, it's time to move on to some of the body while this dries up. As you can see, I've uh, got his legs together, uh, held in place by clothes pegs, just so I can get a good seam down there to uh, get a decent join on it. Uh, so far it appears to be working. Some of the pegs in here are not quite uh, fitting in, so we cut them off and uh, made it fit. Um, with my gaps, if I'm not getting a decent gap on these, what I'm using is I'm using um, a half empty bottle of extra thin with uh, broken down sprue in it so it makes like a plastic plastic welding glue and I'll drop those down in into the seams here and just fill up the gaps slightly uh, that's why I used on, on his eyes they're nearly uh, fully done now so that'll be that uh, as I said I was not going I'm not going to use the uh, prisoner face and uh, hands on there because um, even though there was a couple of couple of guys down in the sewers, the boyfriend and the um, it was the inspector in the silent movie film, uh, there was no other prisoner that I know of in the in the film, so uh, I'm leaving that blank. What I might do is um, do a shamey and flickering light in there or something just to uh, abbreviate that slightly because uh, yes I know this is part of the kit but if you think about the amount of um, rot and whatever is going on in these arms um, and the stroke like situation this guy's got going on his face um, I'd think he would be dead by now and he certainly wouldn't be hanging on to the and he wouldn't be hanging on to the bars um, so no it's not going in uh, so I'll replace those bars with two uh, bits of rod which are almost the same width for the ones that are already in there so I'm quite happy with that. As the same with most others that I've seen on this kit, there's a little lizard. But um, you get in the kit. Um, I'm not going to put him on either. The rat, yeah. Uh, lizard, no. Uh, I intend, if I can, to. Whether it will or not, I don't know. Let's try. Is to perhaps get the face mask to to sit on. Needs a little bit of modification because it's it's not it's not pushing back where it should be because you've got these bits of molding or whatever it is that's going on there. But I think he might look better with his face mask on. And in the uh, silent movie, um, there's like a cloth that hides his teeth. Um, so I think I'm going to see if I can try and fabricate something up to put across there to hide the, uh, hide the teeth. So when it gets taken off, you've got the, the full horror of uh, Mr. Cheney. Um, yes, there are fitment issues in here. I've had to do a lot of sanding down at the moment, but I expected that. The kit's pretty damn old, so you know, it's been repopped a few times. Um, but what I have seen of it, the fitting's not really too bad. It's, uh, it passes. Um, like 
on on this shoe, you can see the massive great seam where one piece of shoe is a bit wider than the other piece of shoe. A knife will take that down and then finish off with a bit of sandpaper. Say sandpaper, sanding sticks that that'll get rid of that that fitment issue. Um, I I expected that on this kit. I didn't expect anything else to be honest with you. It's yeah, no, like I said, it's, it's pretty old. So I'm going to crack on with this. Um, I hang too much on this, and I will uh, get back to you when I've got something a little bit more substantial. Uh, to show you, so see you in a bit. Hello, welcome back. Uh, I've got some bits done. Well, I'm saying the bits done, it's in progress. Uh, the body's um, currently base coloured. In uh, we'll go through a couple more stages. We've got to put a bit of shadows in there, then we've got to bring the highlights out, and then we've got to deal with the white here because it's uh, still got some of the undercoat showing through the primer but I'm happy with the way that's gone on um, here's my uh, dungeon part with rusted uh, iron bars and the rocks and stuff all um, washed and dry brushed Bit of green muck going on there I'll show you a bit of a cold um, what I have put in but not very effective unfortunately is um i wanted to put some sort of light in the the i like the dungeon it's supposed to represent um one of the torches that's on in the sewers or the underground part of the paris opera house so uh, I'm happy with the way that's looking at this moment in time. I've actually managed to put a bit of light in, which is interesting. Never done that before. Right, let's put this light back on again. And uh, we come to uh, the scariest looking part at the moment. The head. Oh. oh, I don't know. We've got a primer, uh, a base coat, a shadow coat, first highlight, second highlight. Um, each one of those is approximately or five layers depending on uh, on the paint so what I'll do is eyes, his eyebrows, his hair uh, tidy up the shirt uh, he's looking rather gruesome looks rather dead as well colouring is quite dead it doesn't really show you on If I can get him in a bit closer to, I think the lighting's a bit more rub too, too rubbish to deal with that. Okay, let's put him off to one side. Um, still got to finish working on the colouring on the hands. Which is good focus. The focus is more probably there. 
Uh, there's about another three or four layers of paint to go on there. Check out for uh, mid tones and highlights for both his hands. And I've got his shoes to paint. I have his mask to paint. Little rat to paint. The, um, what you call it? Ah, oh, what's it called? Cravat. And last of all, his uh, cape to paint. And then I can get him up on his uh, pedestal and and finish painting off down the front here. So that's it for now. I'll close this one off and then uh, come back another day with another video. Because we've got um, a small scale group build coming up. So I need to get myself prepped up for that one. So, thanks for watching. Appreciate all you subscribers, old and new. If you haven't subscribed, please press that subscribe button. Doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, like, share, comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.